In this video, you're gonna learn how to build your own custom AI agent that posts to social media, has conversations with other people automatically, has its own custom personality that you can either program from scratch, extend from other personalities, or even extend from your own personality. The agent can then be easily extended with other functionality, like interacting with Telegram, Discord, or even posting transactions on chain. We're gonna be using the Eliza framework from AI16Z, which is a really great getting started point and it'll allow us to build this very quickly. We're gonna be building with Anthropic Claude as well as Gaia AI models, but this project can be easily extended with any AI model supported by Eliza, including OpenAI and many others. Let's get started. First, we'll go to the Eliza documentation and we'll click Get Started, and then we'll click on Quick Start. And here we can go ahead and clone the repo locally. Next, we'll go ahead and change into the new directory. And what we want to do is check out the latest version. So here in the documentation, it tells you to check out a specific version, but we actually want to check out the latest version. We can either look through the tags and do that, or we can go here to the Eliza GitHub repo, and they have a nice command that we can just run, get checkout, and then it sets the tag and automatically checks out the latest version. We're on 0.1.5 here. This will obviously change in the future, but the things that we're covering here should be somewhat similar for the most part because we're mainly focusing on configuration and environment variables. So what we're gonna do next that we've checked out the version that we want to be in, we're gonna run pnpm install. Finally, we'll run pnpm build. All right, now that we are installed, our version is checked out, we are ready to start configuring our character and our environment variables. So what we'll do is we'll open this project up in our text editor, and we want to copy this .env.example into a .env file. You can do that however you like. I'm just gonna copy this little command here and run it. And now we have this .env file with all of the different environment variables that you can set up. There's a lot here, don't worry about it. Don't get overwhelmed. Most of this stuff we're not even gonna use. What we are gonna use are a couple of these Twitter configurations. I personally would like to use Twitter cookies, but at the moment there is a bug in this framework and it's not working. So we're gonna be opting for username and password and email login. We're also going to be setting up our model LLM API uh, key. So we're gonna be doing two types. One is Anthropic, which will require an API key. And the other is Gaia, which is a public node and you do not need an API key. So we're gonna be doing both and you can follow along and set up both of these or you can just set up one or the other. It's kind of up to you. Obviously my uh, Twitter password and my um, Anthropic API key are private. So I'm not gonna show that but I will show how I can set up everything else. So I'll just go ahead and drop in the username of my agent and it is Cognitive Drift with two Ts. And then also I will um, show you my Gaia configuration here. So we're setting up the model, server URL, embedding code, uh, and then this embedding is true flag. Where did we get that? Well, we can go to the Gaia documentation at docs.gaianet.ai. And over here on the left-hand side, there are public GaiaNet nodes. You can choose whatever node that you would like, Llama, uh, and they have a few others. And in our case, we are rolling with Nomic. Now, next I'm gonna go ahead and um, get off the screen and set up my other credentials and I'll be right back. Now that my environment variables are all set up, we can now configure our character. There's a little bit to dive into here. Hopefully this is uh, interesting to you because this gives you a lot of flexibility and control on your character. To start, you have this characters folder with a couple of JSON examples of characters. This has all of the key value pairs for what you might set up for yourself. So these are just basic characters that you can start with, or you can kind of like create your own character and type all this stuff in. And we're gonna be doing kind of a version of that. But what we would like to do 
is kind of start with an example character and extend it and modify it a little bit. So to understand that a little better, we're gonna actually go to this project called Character File from AI16Z. This is more of like a standard for creating agent characters where you can set up a standard type of personality based on a bunch of key value pairs. In addition to that, they have a nice CLI that you can download your Twitter history and create an agent or create a character based on your all of the things that you've done over the past X number of years on Twitter, which is pretty cool. So you can either opt to create a character from scratch or whatever, or you can download your Twitter character. I'm not gonna do the Twitter character file here because I wanna kind of dive into some specifics that we're gonna walk through, but that is a cool option that you can do. Now to go a little bit further into this character file example here, it's a really useful repo. We're gonna look at this um, example character.json that's in this repo. And this example character.json gives you all the key value pairs and explains what everything is. So with bio, uh, it's kind of obvious what a bio might be, right? But what about lore? Lore lines are each short snippets which can be composed together, just like bio. However, these are usually more factual, blah, blah, blah. So it's a good explanation of all of these different things. Message examples, post examples. Uh, post examples are kind of like your social media activity that you might want to exemplify. Adjectives, all types of stuff. So this is essentially the personality and the style and the character of the character itself. Okay, so that's the JSON that describes you know, the different fields. There's also a default character that is provided by Eliza that has a lot of this stuff or pretty much all of it already filled out. And what we can then do is kind of extend this default character and make our own character. So we can inherit certain things like the lore or the bio or all these different things like a system prompt. And then we can extend them with separate keys for the things that we want to override. We're doing that in this case because it's just a lot simpler for us in this case, so we don't have to fill out all of this stuff from scratch. So what can we do to retrieve that default character? Well, you can just import it into a file. So I'm gonna open my text editor here, and I'm gonna go to Agent, and I'm gonna create a file called main character.ts, and I'm gonna go ahead and import a few um, different modules from A16Z Eliza that we'll look at in just a moment, but notably this default character, which we just talked about. And then we can say, okay, I'm gonna export const main character. And then we can inherit this default character by spreading over it. And now we have inherited that default character and we can just override whatever properties we would like, like bio. Um, we can override the system prompt, other things. But most importantly for us, we want to enable that Twitter integration. So this is where we're gonna enable those integrations, those in actions and stuff. So in this case, we wanna enable the Twitter client. So we're gonna say clients, clients.twitter, and now it's gonna look in our environment variable file, get that Twitter information. When we run this, it's gonna log us in and it's gonna start tweeting and listening for replies. We also want to modify the model. So to do that, we can say model provider, and then we can say model provider name dot, and now we have all these nice different options for models. And we're gonna start with Claude Vertex. Now we could go further and we could extend the name, prompt, all these, I'm sorry, name, bio, all these different things. I think for now, we'll just change the um, name to be Cognitive Drift because that's our agent name. We're gonna run this, we're gonna tweet, we're gonna look at it, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna modify the model to use Gaia, and we're also gonna modify our own system prompt and our own bio and see if there's a difference in the, the way the character acts. So we have this main character set up, we need to actually use this main character. So to do that, we're gonna go into src slash index, and we're gonna look well, first of all, let's go ahead and import main character. So we've imported main character. We're gonna now look for default character. And we're gonna replace the instances of default character with main character. 
So now we've we've replaced default character with our new main character. And when we run Eliza, it's going to recognize that. You could also pass in a location for a different JSON character. And obviously, there's other ways that you can set this up, but that's the way we're going to do it. All right, so to test this out, we're going to go to our terminal and we're going to run npm start. All right, so we've you know, started our agent. It looks like it's all working great. So it says posting new tweet, watching grown men argue about cartoon waifus, it's peak internet brain rots. All right, let's go check this tweet out. I'm going to open Cognitive Drift here. I'm going to refresh. And there we go. We see that we have um, tweeted from our agent. And the agent is going to do two things. It's going to listen for any types of comments. So if someone comments on this, it's going to reply. And it's also going to continue tweeting at an interval that's been set in our um, environment variable. So I think right now the uh, interval is something like two hours. But I'm signed in under my own profile, so I can just say something like, WTF. So I've responded to Cognitive Drift. And Cognitive Drift is going to be listening and checking for any interactions. So let's wait, see what the interaction, um, when the interaction happens and what the response is, and then we can continue on. Okay, it looks like it's um, checked. It's registered that Dabit3 has actually responded and now it's creating a response. And then if we go back to our tweet, we see that Cognitive Drift has responded to us. Someone had to say it, watching grown men simp over 2D girls, blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> interesting. That's our default personality. We did, not, we did not program that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna modify our main character. We're gonna say model provider.gaia net. And then we're going to drop in, I'm about to drop in just a massive like amount of text that's going to be a new system prompt and a new bio. So, you know, don't worry about copying and pasting this. Well, you can copy and paste it. I'm going to link to all this code below, but don't worry about obviously typing all this in. You can type in whatever you want. But the whole idea is we're kind of setting up a slightly new personality. This is probably... I would say not the best way to use a system prompt. You're probably better putting some of this information in the bio and the lore, but for ease sake, I'm just all putting it all into the system prompt. Okay, so we've set up GaiaNet. We've redone our system prompt. What I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna go into data and I'm gonna delete this uh, SQLite database because this has the history of all of our tweets and it's gonna see that we just tweeted and it's gonna not tweet again for like another two hours if it has this uh, history. So I'm gonna delete the history and I'm gonna go back to my terminal and we're gonna now try to run this with Gaia and this new personality. All right, Gaia has now created a new tweet on our behalf. We should be able to go back to the Cognitive Drift profile and see that a new tweet was posted 21 seconds ago. I just spent four hours in a digital dystopia and all I got was this lousy pixelated scar. So that is the new personality that's tweeting from Cognitive Drift. What else can we do? Well, let's go into the, um, let's see here, packages and look at the different adapters and extensions we can do. So we can now integrate other stuff like on-chain or database functionality that isn't already there. So by default, we're using SQLite, but you can add a Supabase database, which is probably like my favorite of these that I would probably end up adding. Um, you can add Discord, Farcaster integrations, Telegram. You can set up um, different networks. So EVM networks, Solana network, Starknet. There is a lot of stuff you can do by extending what we have here, but we have a pretty good starting point. And then the last thing that we can do is we can also chat you know, directly with the agent in the terminal. So you can just type questions there and say things like, tell me about yourself. And there's the response. Hey there, I'm just a perpetual student of Silicon and Stoicism. So that's it. We've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. We've built an agent 
that will go and tweet and talk to people and respond to people. And we can extend this with on-chain functionality by configuring our wallets and other additional features, Telegram and stuff like that. But to get started, this is a really great uh, and fun project to, to get started building with. So I hope you learned something. I'm gonna drop all of the links that we covered in the comments. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thanks.